Good morning. Magandang umaga po. Um, what we're going to talk about today is something that I observed when I was visiting Manila uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, I was there for 35 days and I did notice something and that's what we're going to talk about. Hang loose. Stay with me. While I was in Manila, one thing I noticed is there were lots of Chinese. I will go in, in the elevators, in the hallways, Chinese. Specifically in the morning, there is uh, three or four white vans going to the pickup area and picking up the Chinese people in the morning and in the afternoon dropping them off. So I said, what's going on? What is this? So I, uh, I inquired, I talked to uh, several real estate agents and this is what they said. They said there is an influx of Chinese people buying condominiums, cash, no financing, no check, bags of cash to buy condominiums. Now this is what I was told. Mm, I'm not saying this is a fact, but that's what I was told. I said, now how do they do that? Uh, isn't there a limitation that no more than 40% could be owned by foreigners, condominiums, and they cannot buy any land or single home, twin or, you know, duplex? They cannot. They can only buy uh, condominiums and they're limited to 40%. 60% has to be Filipino owned. And well, I am, I don't know what percentage there is, but then the agent also said, well, they have ways of doing it. I have no idea. But this reminded me of my father. Uh, back in the 60s or not early 70s, because I left early 70s, late 60s, I was in college and my father said to me, you know, I would have been rich. I said, what do you mean? Well, I was being offered by Chinese to buy a property and put it in my name. And that is because they're not allowed to own real estate. And I don't know if this is condo or it's probably single home or commercial or something. And uh, he said, uh, I don't understand what is involved, if there's anything illegal about it or what, so I did not get into it. But if I did, I'll probably be rich today. I still don't know how they do it or what they do. Maybe they put it in somebody's name and they have goons to be sure that when it's time for them to get out of it, that they are going to sign the papers once again and not claim ownership of the property that they bought. Now, that is... What is concerned to me? I don't know exactly what they're doing, but they're doing it and somehow they have a way of doing it. Now, what does this mean to the Philippines? Uh, I did some research when I came back in the U.S. and it's coming from two areas. The construction industry and uh, the gambling casinos. Let's talk about the gambling casinos. The gambling casinos, they send these Chinese people, I'm just speculating now, probably to occupy the high-level, high-paying positions. They will have to, uh, to hire Filipinos in the front end, okay, because they will be interfacing with Filipinos and maybe some Chinese too will interface with Chinese customers. Uh, so yes, it brings in jobs, but low-paying jobs. High-paying jobs are still occupied by the Chinese people or they will not be sending a lot of people, okay? So it doesn't do anything towards employing Filipinos except for a few and low level as I, as I mentioned, but it's still being occupied by high level Chinese so it does not do much for Filipinos. Now what happens? They will make money as you know, you know, the gamblers usually only a few win and then a lot of people lose money and they get that money. What do they do with the money? They're not going to leave it in the Philippines. They bring it to, uh, to China. How they do it, I have no idea. I have no idea. 
And uh, they say uh, that, uh, well, it also helps the Filipinos because of taxes. Well, that's probably true, and that is if they are paying taxes. So this is a complex area, complicated. Uh, they say this and they say that. You don't know what is true and what is not. In fact, somebody said that they asked uh, the president of China to see if they're encouraging this, and China denied it. They said, no, no, we, in fact, we don't like them doing that. And who is going to be dumb to say, Oh yeah, oh well, yeah, we're encouraging them to do that because we want to occupy the Philippines, we want control of the Philippines, but nobody's going to say that. So obviously, I take that with a grain of salt. The next area, the other area, is in the construction industry. They said that there are not too many capable Filipinos uh, who, who knows how to, to handle construction. And I believe that because even in my condo, I can see the quality of workmanship in the details. It's not that great. Very nice design. But when it comes to the details, it's not that great. The granite, the granite countertops, the seams are not are so noticeable. They are not as close as uh, in the uh, as, as it's done in the U.S. And there are some more details uh, that I can talk about. The quality of the material, the quality of the workmanship is not there. But here is the problem I have. Why not bring in experienced people, not only from China but from other countries as well? I am in favor of that to come in and train the Filipinos, not to replace the Filipinos, because I'm sure a lot of Filipinos would like to have work, but to train Filipinos for this good quality workmanship. So we will, you know, progress. That's how I would solve the problem, not by hiring uh, these people and replacing jobs, for, from, from getting jobs from Filipinos. So, guys, that is what I observed. I'm not drawing any conclusion. I'm just a little concerned about the economy of the Philippines if it's all given away to foreigners. Not only Chinese. I'm in favor of Chinese. I'm in, fa in, fa in the U.S. I'm in favor of Latinos. I love them. Okay? But it doesn't mean that you will get immigration out of control. No control. No borders. I'm not in favor of that. So, guys, I just want to share that with you for whatever it is worth. I'll appreciate it if you could share this with other people. Do like uh, my video and subscribe. Uh, I will appreciate that a lot. Make it a great day. Ciao.